Sowing, reaping, and having fun. Well, um, Deborah had mentioned that uh, our correspondence and technology outreach ministry would, would be called CAT, Corresponding Correspondence and, and uh, Technology. Uh, but I may go back to the old name that I mentioned to them on Wednesday night uh, in our uh, uh, outreach committee meeting. So we'll see. But I wonder, what does, for those of you who were here last Sunday, or if you watched and listened to the, uh, uh, to the broadcast uh, uh, for last Sunday, what does the Correspondence and Technology Outreach Ministry require of us? Anybody? Right. Yeah, okay. But there were three things that I focused on other than that. Desire. desire. Thank you. Desire. We must have a desire to be involved in this ministry. Anybody have another? Prayer. prayer. Yes. Definitely need prayer. We need prayer for, uh, for those that we need to reach. Uh, we need to we need to pray for ourselves that maybe we don't have the desire to be involved in this ministry. Pray and ask the Lord that He will give us that desire. One other thing. High level of expectation. Thank you, Dor. We must have that. We must have high expectations that the Holy Spirit will work through us to bring people to Jesus and to this church or some other church of His. When we have high expectations, we experience or we see our faith in action. And that is a faith that results in people in helping people come to Jesus. High expectations are the fuel of our faith. Now, whether you ever thought about that or not, but if we don't expect anything, you know, remember Jesus went to his hometown in Nazareth. We, we read that scripture last week. And the people there didn't expect anything of Jesus and they got very little. It said, the scripture says that he could do few miracles there. Now, again, prayer. We need to pray that we'll have the desire to be involved. We need to pray for that, uh, to have great expectations. And uh, we need to pray even that we will have the desire to pray. Because, you know, we can get so busy. Once we get out of bed in the morning, we can get so busy doing other things that we forget to talk to our Lord. We, need to, we forget to read His Word sometime during the day or pray to Him. We need the desire to pray as well. Oh. We, we, we don't want to be like the little boy in the cartoon who was very dissatisfied with the results of his prayers. He said, Aunt Harriet hasn't gotten married, Uncle Hubert hasn't gotten any work, and Daddy's hair is still falling out, and I'm getting tired of praying for this family without getting any results. Well, sometimes it, you feel like that, don't you? But we must not quit. We must not give up. Never, never, ever give up. On God. Don't give up praying and ask God to give you the desire to give us the high expectations, high level of expectations, and to keep on praying. Bill Hybels wrote, If you bring a thimble to God, He will fill it. 
If you bring a bucket to God, he will fill that. If you bring a barrel to God, he will fill that too. And then Hybels asked the question, which best describes your expectation of God? Thimble, bucket, or barrel? Hmm. Our desire, our high expectations, and our prayers are all connected. We need all three. Do we have all three? They are necessary for this outreach to be successful. And when I'm talking about success, I'm talking about sowing the gospel seeds. We're, we're not responsible for the harvest. God will, will take care of the harvest. We are to be working in His harvest field. All of these are necessary for us to be uh, successful. So now I want us to learn about some principles of this ministry, this outreach ministry. And the first principle is found in 2 Corinthians 9.6. I hope I didn't tell you 1 Corinthians earlier. It is 2 Corinthians. So, The Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, wrote, Remember this, the person who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the person who sows generously will also reap generously. Paul was writing to the Christians in Corinth, a church that he had helped establish, but it was a church that had many problems. But they had kind of made it a commitment to uh, share with the poor people in Jerusalem. And so he was writing in this part of the letter about their uh, benevolence ministry to those folks, about the money that they had corrected. And so this actually, this part is about giving. And that is, uh, that is our, uh, uh, there is a principle. This principle goes along with that. We reap what we sow. If we give, if we work, then we will reap the rewards of that. This principle not only applies to, to money, but it applies to many things in this world. Farmers and gardeners and those involved in other vocations realize that what you put into something is what you get out of it. And sometimes... You get more out of it than you put in, but, but we have to make that effort. To reap, we must sow. We can't expect an ar a harvest where there has been no work, no sowing of gospel seed, no care, no love, no concern. The expectation of a harvest must be preceded by work. Because God will not bless where there has been no effort. This isn't the world's principle. This is God's principle. We reap what we sow. The second principle is involving all active members. When Jesus gave us the, the, the Great Commission... It was not just for those disciples, those 11 disciples that were with him that day. It was for every Christian down through the ages. Still applies today. And it's possible that when we think of outreach, that uh, we think of visitation and evangelism. And that kind of outreach is very important. But during this time of coronavirus, we have to make some changes. And we have to sometimes be creative. Now, I'm not a very creative person, but uh, God is. 
And I did not create this ministry, but God gave it to me uh, through uh, Jerry Tidwell, who wrote a book entitled G-R-O-W, GROW. And that stands, that's an acronym for God Rewards Our Work. And we may just keep that title. We will see. So. Tidwell understood that uh, one of the greatest hindrances to most outreach ministries is that people feel inadequate or uncomfortable sharing their faith with others. Now, folks, we shouldn't. We should know how we came to Jesus. We should know what Jesus has done for us, and be able to put that into words, verbally. But I understand that fear. And a lot of this fear causes many Christians to never commit to an outreach ministry where they're expected to be uh, evangelistic visits. But every member, every member can be involved in this ministry, whether, whatever we call it, grow ministry or the cat ministry. We call it cat ministry. People might think we're ministering to cats only, you know. So anyway, that would have been okay back in the, what, 50s and 60s? when <laughs> that, that, was a, that was a good word for, for people. Anyway, uh, There was a, an active member in a Tennessee church that used this ministry. And he was not one to go out and visit and even share his faith. But he began by writing cards and letters. And eventually that evolved in him to having uh, the more confidence in himself, and he was able to join in the uh, ministry of visitation and outreach. And that's, that's what can happen. Once, once we get involved in this ministry, and we use the material that, uh, that we're given and that we come up with ourselves, uh, we're not going to do, do it from from the instructions you will be given, you will use your own idea of what, what you're given. And we can, we can write to people and we can share our faith doing that. We can include a tract and we want to be caring and show people that we really, we, we really have concern for them. The entry level of writing letters may just cause us to uh, want to be part of the visitation and evangelism uh, ministry once this coronavirus has passed. So you see, every one of us can be involved and you can feel comfortable in being involved in that. As a matter of fact, uh, well, as I just told you, evangelism can be done through the cards and letters. It can be done through texting, phone calls, emails. So I'm praying, I'm praying that folks will get involved in this, that all of our active members will be involved in this. I'm hopeful that they will be. But I hope you'll join me in praying for each other as we take part in this. Now, the third principle is having fun with outreach. When we think of outreach, again, visitation, evangelism, and we don't think that's fun. Most people don't. You know, sometimes we just don't do a very good job of uh, demonstrating to people that serving Christ is fun. 
Outreach is serious. It is a serious thing. But it can also be fun and it can be exciting because we're doing the Lord's work of connecting people to Him. And getting fogged up up here. In this ministry, we will meet together. We will share with one another different ways that that we may have thought of and hopefully you have thought of and you have asked God to to give you direction in how to write to people, how to uh, show them that we care and, and share the good news of Jesus with them. We can have fun carrying out the mission of Pigeon Fork Baptist Church, which is sharing Christ and developing disciples. It will require work. It will require faith. It will require the empowering work of the Holy Spirit. But it can be done, and it can be fun. I know there are groups in this church already or groups that are part of this church or were at one time where they have fun. I think about the the quilting group that comes together and and meets, uh, uh, sometimes they meet on Saturday here. They have fun in what they're doing. Uh, So why can't we have fun doing outreach like this? Uh, we've had uh, Sunday night and Wednesday night groups that have had fun as they studied the Bible. Uh, we have uh, a choir uh, that sometimes has too much fun, and uh, uh, especially two guys in that, that choir. I'm not going to mention any names, but <laughs> yeah, uh, kind of, you know, they have fun. They have fun. And so, We can have fun doing outreach. When I was a kid and a teenager, I would visit uh, a certain uncle and my cousins and uh, uh, on the farm in, uh, well, on Anderson Franklin County line. I'd spend a week there. And uh, you already know what I think about farm work. I I didn't like the farm. Uh, And I think one of the reasons I didn't was because usually it was just dad and me chopping out tobacco. And we had a tobacco patch that was just way too long. The rows were way too long, Marvin. And uh, uh, the hay, there were too many hay fields. There was too much baling and hauling of hay. And of course, the square bales then didn't know anything about a roll bale. Uh, sometimes I'd get to that uncle's farm and uh, we'd have to work. His boys and, and I, we would have to go out and we'd haul in hay or uh, chop out tobacco. And you know what? That wasn't too bad because I had more people around me. I, I, it, was, it was just more fun to be doing that farm work. Now, I want you to consider uh, the early church in Acts chapter 2. And I'm going to read some verses from Acts chapter 2. They're probably very familiar verses to you. Uh, Verses 41 and 42 says, Those who accepted his message, Peter's preaching message, were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 people were added to them. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. And then down in verses 46 and 47, we read, Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple complex and broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with a joyful and humble attitude. Joyful attitude. They they had fun. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to them those who were being saved. Now, read between the lines with me here. Do you think these people were having fun? I believe they were. 
they were going house to house and they were they, they were talking to people and they were they were uh, they were trying to get people to come to Jesus. Look again in verse 47. It says, they praised God and they had favor with all the people and the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Having favor with the people surely means that these folks were sowing the gospel seeds with love and with concern for others. And I do not believe that the Lord would have added more folks to a group of people who were not having fun. Because if you're not having fun in your salvation, something's wrong. I believe those folks in their fellowship with one another, when they were praying together, when they were in the temple complex together, when they were uh, going house to house, when they were sharing Uh, food and and fellowship together that they were having fun. This church has survived for 195 years. Five more years and it will be 200 years old. And I know that there have been times in this church when the members wondered if the church would continue to exist. Five years ago may have been one of those times. But you know, God has blessed. God has blessed this church. And He is still going to bless this church. But we've encountered another setback. We've encountered something that's invisible to us and is, uh, uh, well, it's terrible. And the devil uses it to uh, use it against us, against Christians. I mean, there are still several churches who do not get together uh, to worship. And some of those are larger churches. I know one large church was shut down in uh, California. Uh, the pastor had said they would get generators. I don't know whether they did or not, but uh, uh, they were their electricity, their power was cut off because they were still meeting. John MacArthur's church, I don't remember the name of it. But even though we have a setback, we can still, this church can still survive. But I think that we must, I know that for us to survive, we will have to obey God. And we will have to get to work in His harvest field. Jesus looked out at a crowd And what he saw was people who were like sheep without a shepherd. We have that today still. Some of them may be really wild sheep. But they are sheep without a shepherd. They are people that God created. And we need to care for them. We need to show concern. We need to love them. But will we? Will we? Let's uh, like you bow your heads, close your eyes at this time.